ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we're going to look at how we got our trigonometric sum difference identities. So here I have two unit circles. So I want to explain the information I have on these unit circles. On this first unit circle, I have this angle labeled in blue. So this angle is going from here all the way to over here. The angle in blue I'm calling angle U. And I have this angle in green, this angle in green I'm calling angle V. Now notice between U and V is this angle theta. Theta, theta is just the angle that's here. So if you look at it, theta equals angle U minus angle V. So theta is U minus V. And I try to make my U's and V's uh, distinct. I think in mathematics a lot of properties we customarily use U and V, uh, though sometimes students have a problem with the distinctiveness of the letter U and the letter V. So I try to uh, bring out that distinctiveness. Okay, so again I have this angle U in blue, uh, this angle V in green, and this angle theta, which is u minus v. Here I have the coordinates of these two angles. So we know the x coordinate of an angle is cosine of that angle on the unit circle, and the y coordinate is sine of that angle. So you see where I have angle u, the coordinates are cosine u, comma, sine u. Where I have angle v, uh, the coordinates are cosine v comma sine v. Now what I did on this particular unit circle is I took this same angle theta here. So I took theta and I rotated it where the terminal side is right here. So right here where theta is normally zero degrees or zero radians and at this point where the coordinates of the point are 1 comma 0. The reason we rotate it like this is because it's going to make the math pretty easy to do because I have a point of 1 0 here so it makes the math pretty easy and again I'm calling the angle theta again theta is u minus v and so the coordinates of this point are cosine theta comma sine theta. So we're going to get this trig sum difference identity and we'll do it for cosine sine and tangent and this first one we're going to do it for cosine to get the identity uh, we're going to use a pretty basic property in mathematics uh, being a distance formula since these are the same angle this is the same angle theta here and this is the same angle theta there these are both unit circles so therefore this distance has to equal this distance. So we're going to show that this distance equals that distance. Now, the formula to find the distance between two points, so if I want to find the distance between two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, just as a reminder, that distance is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So this is the form I'm going to use for these particular cases. Uh, so in this one consider this x2 y2, consider this x1 y1, consider this x2 y2, consider this x1 y1. So I'm going to plug that information into this formula. Now I'm going to be setting these two distances equal to each other. Because I'm going to set these two equal to each other, uh, the radical uh, is insignificant. Meaning if I work this out and I had, I don't know, uh, the square root of 100 equals the square root of 100, well also 100 equals 100. So from a mathematical standpoint, having a radical there doesn't do much for me. So when I do the problem, 
I'm going to omit the radical. In essence, you can see me first doing a formula and squaring both sides if you want, but I'm not even going to write the radical to begin with. So let's look at how it looks. So again, what I'm doing is simply saying that this line is equal to this line, which, which has to be the case. So I'm going to do the distance formula here. <clears throat> so again, it's x2 minus x1 squared. So this is cosine u minus cosine v squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that's sine u minus sine v squared. So that would be the square of the distance of this line. And that should equal x2 minus x1, so cosine theta minus 1 squared. plus uh, y2 minus y1, and so that's just sine squared theta. Alright, so there's initial uh, setup. So if you really wanted to be strict and you wanted to put the square root there, sure, go right ahead and just consider at this moment I square both sides, so now the square root is gone. Okay, so now we're just going to do a little bit of algebra here. And so uh, for the board I have here, to do all the problem at once, it's not going to be enough space. So I'm just going to do this side for now. I'll do this side, uh, it'll expand, and then it condense, and after it condenses, uh, then I'll deal with this side. So here, I'm squaring binomials. So when I square the binomials, hopefully you understand how this works. I'll get cosine squared u minus 2 cosine u cosine v plus cosine squared v. So that's the result of squaring this guy here. And again, it comes from the formula a minus b squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, something you should be familiar with. And now there will be a similar transaction occurring here. So when I square this guy, I'll get plus sine squared u minus 2 sine u sine v plus sine squared v. <clears throat> okay, so what I have written here is only the expansion of the left hand side of the equal sign. That's it. So I haven't touched this just yet. And you can see the expansion of the left hand side of the equal sign is taking up the whole board, which is why I can't do uh, both, part, both sides at once. So <clears throat> I'm going to condense this side uh, based on some some other identities in trig, uh, namely Pythagorean identities, and that is that cosine squared u plus sine squared u equals 1. And cosine squared v plus sine squared v also equal one, equals 1. So everything you see that is underlined is going to turn into 2, 1 plus 1. So therefore, so what we have, so again, everything you see underlined equals 2. So everything underlined is out of there, and we just have 2. So 2 minus 2 cosine u cosine v minus 2 sine u sine v. All right, so I have, con I have expanded and condensed the left-hand side. So now I'm going to deal with the right-hand side. So the right-hand side, I'll write below because it's still going to be a little bit more than the room I have here. So equals. So I'm going to square this guy. Again, the same little formula, squaring a binomial. So that's going to be cosine squared theta minus 2 cosine theta plus 1. And then also uh, we have the sine squared theta at the end. And again we'll use that same Pythagorean trigonometric identity. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. Um, that 1 added to that 1 will give us 2. So the right hand side is going to be 2 minus 2 cosine theta. So I'm going to write the left-hand side and the right-hand side 
together now. I think now since they've been condensed, I'll have room to write both. So let's see. So the left hand side is 2 minus 2 cosine u cosine b minus 2 sine u sine b equals 2 minus 2 cosine theta. Okay, so you see this 2 and that 2 out of there. And so what we're left with is negative 2 cosine u cosine b minus 2 sine u sine b equals negative 2 cosine theta. So obviously it makes sense to divide everything by negative 2. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. I'm also going to, when I divide by negative 2, I'm just going to have a cosine theta here. I'm going to proceed to put that cosine theta on the left hand side of the equal sign. So I'm dividing everything by 2. So by negative 2, so this is just going to turn to a positive cosine u cosine v. This is going to turn to a positive sine u sine v. And this is going to turn to a positive cosine theta. So what we get is cosine theta equals cosine u cosine v plus sine u sine v. And remember what theta equaled. Theta was u minus v. So actually, cosine u minus v equals cosine u cosine v plus sine u sine v. Okay, and that actually is our first uh, sum, trigonometric sum, well, technically difference, trigonometric difference identity, that cosine u minus cosine v is cosine u times cosine v plus sine u times sine v. Okay, so we can box this guy. It's ready to be shipped out. Now, what I'm going to need is I'm, I'm going to need an identity for cosine u plus v, and then sine u plus or minus v and tangent u plus or minus v. All right, so let's see what happens with cosine u plus v. The good news is I have a formula for cosine u minus v. And in fact, that's, that's great news. So to do cosine u plus v, really all I have to do is cosine u minus negative v. <clears throat> so you understand cosine, and again, I start getting lazy when I get into it with the distinctiveness of my u's and my v's. So I'm, I'm going to proceed to write that again. So cosine u minus negative v. So of course, uh, this is the same thing as cosine u plus v. u minus negative v is the same thing as u plus v. Why am I writing as u minus negative v? because I have a formula for the difference of two angles. So I'm going to apply that formula here. So this is my difference identity. I already have that established, so I'm just going to plug in the values into this formula. So my v in this case is going to be negative v. So everywhere you see a v in this formula, I'm going to plug in the negative v. That, that's going to be the difference. So this is going to be cosine u times cosine negative v plus, a little lazy on that v, but I believe you know what it is, plus sine u times sine negative v. Okay, so we should know that cosine is an even function and sine is an odd function. For an even function, f of negative x is f of x. So what that means is, uh, cosine of negative v is the same as cosine of v. So this is cosine u, and again, cosine of negative v is the same as cosine v. Cosine v. Now, sine is an odd function. For an odd function, f of negative x equals negative f of x. So sine of negative v is actually negative sine of v. 
So the negative sign for the negative sign of V I'll put here. So minus sine U sine V. So there it is. So there's your cosine sum formula. Again, we were doing the cosine of U minus negative V. Well, that's the same thing as cosine of U plus V. So this is cosine U plus V. And what you should notice about the cosine uh, sum and difference formula is when it's minus, here it's plus, and when it's plus, here it's minus. In both cases, we start off with cosine u, cosine v in the front, and sine u, sine v in the back. So, just a general way of writing it, cosine u plus or minus v would be cosine u times cosine v minus plus sine u sine v. Okay, so there's your cosine sum difference identities. Okay, what about sine? Since I have this cosine formula, I can easily use sine because for sine we have a co-function identity. And a co-function identity, so sine and cosine, they're what we call co-functions. That's why it's called sine and cosine. Other co-functions, of course, are tangent and cotangent, secant and cosecant. A co-function has the following property. So I'm, I'm submitting to you that sine and cosine are co-functions. So that means that the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta equals sine theta. The cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is the same thing as sine theta and vice versa. The sine of pi over 2 minus theta uh, is the same thing as cosine theta. So, why is that important? If I look, so let me take a look at my cosine sum identity. So the cosine of u plus v is cosine u times cosine v minus sine u times sine v. So I want to find a formula for sine, correct? But I only have right now a formula for cosine. So I can still do a cosine formula. In fact, I can do the following uh, cosine formula. So I can take cosine of pi over 2 minus u plus v. Now again, the cosine of pi over 2 minus u plus v will be the same thing as sine u plus v. So this actually represents sine u plus v. So the answer I get is going to represent sine u plus v. But I'll do it with cosine because I have a formula for cosine. So I like to rewrite this a little bit using the associative property and I would like to group it in a following manner. So I would like to think of it to easily do the formula as cosine pi over 2 minus u minus cosine v. So again we had to distribute this minus sign so that's why you have the minus v there. So in terms of the formula this guy is like my u, and this guy is like my v. But now since I have a minus sign here, uh, it's like the cosine difference formula, where when there's a minus here, it's a plus sign there. Okay, so let's do the formula. So based off the formula, this will be the cosine of pi over 2 minus u times the cosine of v minus so plus sine of 
pi over 2 minus u times the sine of v. Okay, so just simplify a little bit. So the cosine of pi over 2 minus u is sine u. So this is sine u. So this is sine u cosine v plus and the sine of pi over 2 minus u is cosine u. So plus cosine u sine v. So again, this formula was for the cosine of pi over 2 minus u plus v, which means that's for the sine of u plus v. So the sine of u plus v is sine u cosine u plus cosine u sine v. So sine u, I said sine u cosine u, excuse me, sine u cosine v plus cosine u sine v. And if we did the difference, which I won't illustrate, but it's fairly easy to illustrate, the only difference would be minus instead of a plus. Uh, so for a sine, if it's plus, you'll get plus, and if it's minus, you'll get minus. And the thing to remember, cosine subdifference starts off cosine cosine, then sine sine. Sine some difference starts off sine cosine, cosine sine. Okay, so now we have cosine, so now we have sine. So the last one to find is tangent, yes? The good news is tangent is simply sine over cosine. So since we know the identities for sine and cosine, we can easily find the identity for tangent. So let's, let's look at tangent, shall we? So I want to find the tangent of u plus v, which I know equals the sine of u plus v divided by the cosine of u plus v. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the sine of u plus v, so the numerator would be sine u cosine v plus cosine u sine v. So that's just the sum identity for sine being expanded here. And the cosine of u plus v would be cosine u cosine v minus sine u sine v. Now, if you're thinking you can cross some things out, uh, you're wrong. So, you, you couldn't divide uh, sine v and sine v here, or cosine v and cosine v here, or say sine u over cosine u is, is tangent. So, this, these are sums and differences. So they don't divide into each other. If these were products or quotients, sure, we, we can cancel stuff. But sums and differences, uh, we cannot. So there's really nothing we can do to this. We are going to simplify it and put it in a different form. But there's nothing that's going to cancel out here. Now, what I'm going to do uh, for the sake of making this more aesthetically pleasing is I'm going to divide everything. So to keep it equal, I have to divide the top and bottom or every term by the same thing. And I'm going to divide everything by cosine u, cosine v. So I'm dividing, I'm going to make a note because I can't really, I'm not going to really write it. I'm going to say what happens. But just as a note, I'm going to be dividing by cosine u, cosine v. All right, this is just to make it more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Okay, so let's look at that division. So here, I'm dividing by cosine u, cosine v, right? Okay, the cosine v would cancel. It's out of there. And then you would have sine u over cosine u, tan u. Plus. Now, I'm doing the same thing here. 
all four of these are going to be divided by this guy. So I have to do that to maintain it, to maintain the value of this expression. So here I'm now dividing by cosine u, cosine v. Okay, here the cosine u would cancel, and I would have sine v over cosine v, tan v. Now here, again, I'm dividing by cosine u, cosine v. Well, this is cosine u, cosine v, so I would get 1. Minus, and here I have sine u, sine v, divided by cosine u, cosine v, which will give me tan u, tan v. So here is our identity for tangent u plus v. And as you were probably thinking, if I wanted to do minus, so when it's minus, uh, that would be minus and that would be plus. So that is how we get our three trig some difference identities. Thank you.